Agatha All Along Episode 5. We got some spoilers. We got some info. We got some reveals. And we got a whole lot of more questions. Let's get into it. So Episode 5 starts off right where we expected. We do get an early look at the Salem 7. Now, I'm not well versed in the supernatural side of Marvel. So I took it upon myself to do a little research on the Salem 7. And... Well, they're kind of interested if you ask me. The Salem Seven is a fictional team of magical beings and former supervillains appearing in Marvel Comics. They were initially foes of the Scarlet Witch and the Fantastic Four, but became allies of both. All seven are the children of Nicholas Scratch, remember that name, it'll come in handy later, and the grandchildren of Agatha Harkness. They are witches and warlocks with magical powers who can transform into fantastic creatures with superpowers. And looking at their pictures from the comics, they look pretty interesting and cool. Of course, in the show, they don't have that sort of comic book flash to them. And I don't know how they're going to present them when they fully arrive. But so far, I'm interested and I want to see more. We get a few cheesy witch tropes in this one, which is flying on brooms across the moon. And it eventually leads to the normal formulaic thing that we get from every episode of all the characters walking into a room that's themed around 70s or 80s. I think this one is in a cabin and they begin their trial for the next which which is Agatha Harkness on this one it centers around them playing on a Ouija board and having some interesting jokes here and there I thought it was really funny when Catherine Hahn impersonated Miss Hart <laughs> it was pretty hilarious to me she always gets a chuckle out of me her acting is just amazing and cheerful as always so that I got a kick out of that when she actually got possessed I would say the show finally turned up its creepy factor a little bit um the makeup and effects weren't nothing too major nothing you wouldn't see in a regular horror film but it at least established itself of having some of those tropes and ideas and the way that we know horror to be the episode was short and didn't have too much to it but we did get to dig a little bit more into agatha's history we had our mother make an appearance as a ghost and pretty much just say horrible things about agatha and how she should have unalived her as soon as she was born there really wasn't much there to grasp onto but we do get a scene where alice who tries to save agatha who they should be punishing as per the trial she takes Alice's powers in which we know takes the witch's life. And it was pretty gruesome and unexpected. I thought Alice was going to make it further. Like I said, you never know with these shows who's really dead and who's not. Like it's a show about magic and it's based off of comic books. But for the time being, it looks like Alice is gone. And that's pretty surprising. This leads to Teen doing something very drastic. And we always thought something was up with this guy. But he touches the Ouija's board and he gets a name of Nicholas Scratch. Now, if you remember, that was the name I said before as being the father of the Salem Seven, grandchildren of Agatha Harkness. If you put that together, of course, if you haven't put it together in the show, we put it together here. Yes, Nicholas Scratch is the name of her son, who they alluded to earlier, that she might have gave him up for Mephisto. So there's a lot going on here. And for some reason, that stopped her from doing what she was doing. And it definitely means something to her. And it definitely means something to the team. This causes Agatha to go kind of on an ego trip. And she's somewhere in between. I'm the greatest witch. Everyone listens to me. And then when the team tells her off, she kind of pipes down a little bit and realizes she might be being a jerk. But it was too late. The team already in his mind convicted Agatha of just being a horrible person, which he doesn't like. And he starts to show his true colors. Now, we all suspected it. A lot of stuff was leaking online. Everyone thought this. If not, people had an inclination that this might be Billy, a.k.a. Wiccan, a.k.a. Wanda's son. And we pretty much get a reveal. A crown materializes on his head. He begins to use his powers and he possesses the witches to throw Agatha into a pit. And then they proceed to throw themselves into said pit. All while a Billy Eilish, ironically, song plays in the back because, you know, Billy, Wiccan, Billy Eilish. Anyway, this to me is... Not so much a surprising reveal to me personally and probably not to a lot of people who are really into it, but it does raise a whole lot of questions. Did he always have powers and was just faking it all along? Does he know who he really is? And also, who is he really? Because he wasn't an actual son of Wanda in this timeline, universe, whatever you want to call it. Did he come from one of the Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness universes or somewhere else? Is he even real? Is he a manifestation of Agatha at this point? We really don't know at this point. So I think that's something that they have to explore. And I hope they answer. I hope they don't just leave us with a he. He's here. And what happened to Tommy, his brother? Is he also around? So there's a few questions that need to be answered from this. But overall, I think this episode ran about 30 minutes. It was short and sweet. 
It gave us everything we need. And I'm still here. This episode brought me back from the last episode, which wasn't the greatest, more like a filler. But I think this one really said, all right, the show is going to ramp up here. We got four more episodes left, nine episodes in total. And yeah, let's get to it. We got the Salem 7 running around. I'm excited about that. We got Wiccan finally revealing himself if he is actually Wiccan. And I want to know more. So far, Agatha has been a pretty solid show. Episode four is probably the weakest episode for me so far, but five is raising the bar back up. So I will definitely be here for six. We had a massive hurricane in my area, so I'm lucky to even be getting this episode out. I hope everyone around is safe. But let me know what you guys think. Please hit the like so I can keep this going. The likes mean so much to me. Even if you don't subscribe, just please like, comment. Tell me what you think about the episode. Tell me what you think about the reviews. And uh, I'll see you guys around for episode six.